guys welcome back to my channel um today i just want to go through a um basically a tutorial or craft with me what have you but this is what um i'm going to be making i have got um so far i've got eight of these that are ready to be put in my etsy store but i wanted to make a couple um that were like blue that um you know is not so girly girly as this one is but this is what we're going to be making uh, this book it is um, I think the measurements are four and a half by seven um, I've used a chipboard to make the cover um, and I've got it upside down like I always do um, I do want to add a few things to this um, please forgive my dogs before I list it um, but when you open it Hang on, I'm back. I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyway, when you um, open it, the first thing you'll notice is it's not the regular journal. Um, this has envelopes in it. And um, I did add, um, like on this one, I've added the flip. It does have a pocket behind here that I'm gonna stick something in. I've got little um, slips here so that the envelope will close. Um, before I list them on Etsy, I will have the envelopes full of all sorts of little um, cards and journal cards, what have you. Um, now my cat is going to start. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, guys. I live in a zoo. Um, this is a belly band that flips up. This is also a belly band um, and then it opens, um, but you can put stuff behind that. And so this is what we're going to make. So let's get started. Um, I have already picked out my um, my papers. I need a total of seven. Um, I need one for the cover, one for the inside, and then one for each of the five envelopes that I'm going to do. So I've got my papers. And let me get a chipboard here. I've got my chipboard and I have um, cut my chipboard. It is seven inches tall by 10 and a half inches wide. And the reason I do 10 and a half is because this is four and a half and four and a half. So that was nine. And then I want a one and a half inch center. And that gives me about a quarter inch for each one of my envelopes. So I've already um, scored it, um, cut it. So it's right ready to um, start gluing my papers down. But what I need to do is I need to cut um, the paper that's going to be my cover. I need to cut it down. And so I want um, the width part of the paper is fine, but I want to have about that same amount top and bottom. Um, so I'm going to add an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. So we're going to have seven, eight, nine. So I need to cut this one at nine inches. And I'm going to get out a trusty little paper cutter. And I have, I've got brand new cutters. Um, I've got a rotary cutter, you name it. But I always fall back to my old faithful. You know, I'm, I'm a creature of habit, number one. But So I don't know if that's habit or if it really does work better. Okay, so I needed to cut this at nine inches. And I'm going to save this um, strip of paper because I will probably be using this um, in some of the embellishments in the journal. Now I'm just going to get my chipboard back out and I am going to glue all over this. And I definitely use Fabrifix for this or Fabri-Tac, I mean. Um, I want to make sure that this journal stays um, glued down very well. I don't want the cover coming up. Um, and you can see it's kind of gobbed up from Apparently me not putting the thing on it, right? No, no, I have to. So I'm just gonna grab that and stick down in it. That should be fine now. Oh yeah, that's what I like to hear because that means it's working. 
So I'm gonna put, and I really wanna pay attention to the edges, the corner here, um, all over. I mean, I really wanna pay attention all over, but I wanna make sure that I get it there. And then when I put the paper down, I will um, take my glue spreader and spread the glue out and it'll come out the edges, which is perfectly fine by me because when it does, that means that I have got good coverage around the corners and the edges. So it does not bother me. You can tell by my table here that obviously I haven't cared too much about glue getting everywhere. Okay, that should be enough to get me started. <laughs> and I'm dropping everything. And I just use this blank credit card thing um, for my glue spreader. So I'm gonna turn the paper over so I can make sure of my placement. And I'm just going to place that down. And I like where it's placed. So now I'm gonna turn it back over. And I'm really just gonna spread that glue out really good. And like I said, I'm perfectly fine if it comes out the edges. Um, when it does, that means I've got great coverage. So I hope everybody is doing well. I am, um, I'm doing great, but I'm sorry, I'm probably getting in the spring. I do apologize. I thought I had my napkins right here with me. Um, I am preparing for my oldest son's wedding on Thursday, April the 8th. He will be a married man. Y'all hear my cat? Oh my goodness. It's like I really do live in a zoo. <laughs> All right, so now I've got this glued down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and um, I'm just going to kind of clip the corners a little bit. Um, so that they'll fold in and I won't have all that excess. And I don't throw these away. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these. That is if my cat will stop crying because he knows Mama is home from work and he can't handle it. I was looking for my big scissors. I don't know what I done with them. They must be in my bag. Just make things a little quicker. But they don't really take that long to make one of these. Or I've made so many of them. I have the dimensions and I have everything. Just it's like muscle memory at this point. Um, and I, I really enjoy making these. Um, my husband last night was looking at some of the ones I've already got made. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm uh, looking for my big scissors here. Yeah. Um, my husband last night was seeing them and he said, I need you to make me one of those. So guess what? I made him one before work this morning. Yep, because they really don't take long to make. So now what I'm going to do with these corner pieces here, and this is something I learned from Miss Edith with Scrapbooking With Me. I'm just going to take those corner pieces and I'm going to glue them right there on the corners. So that way when I fold my corners up, if there's um, any of the chipboard that would be showing, um, it will show that blue. So it won't be that noticeable chipboard. So that is all I'm going to do there. Look at me trying to take the, oh my goodness. Y'all, it was a week of Mondays last week. Um, Crafting was the only thing that kept me halfway sane. Hush, Shell. I know what you're thinking. Shell's probably talking about me. I'm not sane, but that's okay. Birds of a feather, feather flock together, Shell. All right. I'm going to go um, for just a second. I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to fill my glue bottle back up. It doesn't work as good for me whenever it gets low like that. I have a problem squeezing it. And even though this is the um, Sugar Bell bottom bottle, I still have a lot of problems with um, squeezing it. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. I do apologize about that. 
All right, so now I have a full bottle of Fabri-Tac. And again, this is the Sugar Bell bottom bottle. God help me, I can't even talk, y'all. I'm telling you. This is the Sugar Bell bottle. And it is wonderful. I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm just kind of going right through here and I'm just turning up um, where I have or where I'm going to be folding it. And that way it just makes it a little easier for when I do go um, to glue it down. And the other thing I'm going to do is right here where the um, seams are, I'm going to clip just a little bit out. Um, just so that I don't have quite so much bulk when I'm trying to fold it. And that's all I'm doing right here. Just cutting a little V in. And I'm not going all the way down. I'm trying not to go all the way down, should I say. Y'all see how wonderful my V is? Hash shell. <laughs> um, okay. And then I always keep a little um, bucket that I keep trash in so that I can just throw it away when I'm done. All right, so now it's time to just start gluing it down. And again, I wanna be a little generous on the glue because I just wanna make sure that everything is good and covered. I don't want it coming up or um, trying to do its own little thing. Oops, that's not going to show, so we're good. My husband brought me home a whole um, sleeve of these empty um, credit card type things. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's like a thousand of them. And he was like, they were throwing these away at work, kitten. No, he calls me kitten. He said, is anything you can use these for? And I was like, huh, yes, absolutely. So, I love my glue spreaders. I'm just going to glue this side down. Yeah, what, I've been busy getting ready for the wedding. Um... My ex-husband is doing the flowers. Um, he did all of the flowers for our daughters when they got married. Um, we had uh, nine children together. We had and same daddy, same mama, same daddy. Um, all mine and his both. Um, but he did all of the flowers for our daughters when they got married. And, you know, I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, he does an amazing job with flowers. Um, and the flowers that I've seen so far for my son's wedding are just, they're gorgeous. Um, so I haven't had to worry about that, thankfully. That's, he's done that. But I am excited because I do have um, my daughter that lives down um, South Florida. She is going to be in, and I'm just kind of trimming this stuff up, um, where somebody did not cut it so great. Um, yeah, she'll be in, um, I think, about 10.30 tonight with my two grandbabies that she has. So that is super exciting. And then we have um, the wedding is on Thursday. I get my second shot on Friday. Friday night we have a rodeo. My fourth daughter competes and she carries the flag. Saturday afternoon we have a horse show. And then Saturday night, we have a radio again. <laughs> I don't have anything going on. I just have plenty of time to craft. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. And while I'm letting this dry, I am going to go ahead and cut my inside piece. And I want my inside piece, I don't want it to come all the way to the edge. So I want it to be 10 inches will be just great. And then in the height, 
I'm gonna go six and three quarters. So I'm just gonna cut it at 10 by six and three quarters, and I'm gonna set that out of the way. And I am going to use this for the inside piece. Let me get this stuff out of the way. I cannot work, and so, oh, it just drives me crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this piece here. I'm gonna cut, do this cut at 10 inches. And then I'm gonna do it at six and three quarters. And again, I'm not gonna throw um, the scraps away or get rid of them right yet because I'm going to use them to embellish the inside. Now we'll need our paper trimmer again in just a little bit, but for now I'm gonna put it out of the way. The other thing I want to do, number one, is I want to round the corners. And I just got my little chomper chomper. And you don't have to round the corners. I just like the way that it looks. Um, it just looks a little bit more finished. Um, so that's why I round them. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, uh, scoreboard here and I am going to score in my, um, my spine just to make it a little easier when I go to add this in. And so I just got it placed here where it's on, um, where this is on the center. So I'm gonna go three quarters over from the center and score down. And then I'm gonna go three quarters over and score down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this um, a little bit because this is just going to make it much easier for me when I go to um, put it in the book because I am so bad about lining stuff up. Oh, I, I mean, I don't have the greatest vision. Um, I don't really see out of my right eye that much. So I don't know if maybe that's why I can't tell where something's at or like, good. so I have to do, you know, I have to have these little tricks to help me out. So what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I just kind of folded that and when I do this, I'll put glue on one or the other, and then I'll just set this down in there. And when I set it down in there, then I know that I have got it exactly where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and do that. I think what I'm going to do is glue the inside here. So I'm just going to glue on the spine. I'm not going to glue the sides down yet. I want to get my spine placed and then once I get it placed then I can glue the sides down okay so I'm just gonna do like this and just set it in here like a taco and I'm just kind of looking to make sure I've got it um, about the same at the top and bottom just pressing down to make sure I get everything right where I want it and then once I have that then I can kind of lay it back down and I just moved it a little bit so I want to make sure that it's still and you can see there how it's lined up it's perfectly in that spine area there so I don't want it to move right now and now I'm just going to lift that one side up and I'm going to coat this with glue and so that, you know you may have a way that you prefer to do it easier or better or you know something that works better for you um this is just what works for me um so you do whatever is easiest for you and what works the best for you um you know everybody does it differently and it doesn't mean that that somebody else is doing it wrong and you know somebody's doing it right and, mm -mm, not at all um each person has different ways that makes it easier for them and so that's what you do you just do you find the way that works best for you 
So I'm just going to glue this side down. And when I get this side glued down, then I'll just set the cover over to the side and just let it dry real good. Okay. I don't need the glue for a little bit now. So I've got it put up. So again, I'm just scraping my glue around, making sure I get good coverage. And again, I'm okay if it comes out. I keep a paper towel or a wet wipe um, right here handy. Um, okay, so that's all I'm going to do on the cover for now. So as you can see, this is the cover and this is my inside. So now I'm just going to set this out of the way, let it dry really good um, because I want it to be completely dry for the next step that I'm going to use it for. So I'm going to put this glue up out of the way and I'm going to get my cutting board back out. I'm going to set this out of the way for right now because I don't need it right this second. It will be a few minutes before I need any of that. So I am going to be using my um, envelope punch board and I know that um, for the envelopes that I'm going to be doing, they're three and a half by six and a half. And so with this, if you look at the three and a half by six and a half, hopefully you can see it. It says for me to cut my paper at eight and three eighths of an inch and my punch guide is three and one eighth. So all I'm going to do is start cutting my papers and they need to be eight and three eighths of an inch um, square. So I'm just going to do that. I have five and I like to put an odd number of um, envelopes um, in mine, whether it be five, seven, nine, three. Um, I just like the way it helps me whenever I can go through the center and then go out. Um, and I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I like to do things in um, maybe mass making. I don't know if that's the right, the correct word for it, but I definitely do like things assembly line. Um, I don't know if that's because I, I do have so many children and I'm used to doing things like in an assembly line type fashion. Um, I don't know. But that's just how I have found that things work the best for me. Is if I just do everything assembly line. Um, which is why, like, you see how I'm doing with the envelopes. I'm, I'll get all of the envelopes ready. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm crazy like that. I think it's maybe because I lose track of where I'm at if I don't do it all at one time. Because I have so much going on at all times. Yes, I go to work at my regular job. I work from 9 to 6 in a legal office. And uh, so you would think that I would sleep late or something. But no, the latest I sleep is 5. And I like to get up that early because I come in my craft room and I work. Um, and I don't normally, I normally go to bed, I guess, um, I don't know, it's normally 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I don't sleep much. <laughs> so I'm just going to set these out of the way for now. I'm going to get this. And if you remember... Um, whenever we were looking, it was at three and one eighths. And again, um, like I said, I just kind of do everything in an assembly line fashion when I can get everything working correctly. Yeah, we. <sighs> last week was a week of Mondays. I hope this week's not going to be like that. So I'm just lining it up at three and one eighth. The, then I punch and score. And then I turn it, and I'm going to line this up right with that, um, this one right here. And then I'm going to punch and score. 
flip it. And again, I'm lining up. Because once you do your first um, mark over here on your punch guide, you don't use that anymore. You use your score lines. So I am going to line that up. Punch. Score. And then I'm going to line it up again. Punch. And score. Then on the... Um, punch board, I can also take this right here, put it in on this side, punch it, and now I have the round, rounded corner. So I am just going to do that. And I had thought about like skipping, you know, doing one and then pausing the video for you guys so that you didn't have to sit there and watch me do all of these. But I got to thinking about it. And I know, you know, it doesn't take long. And I want you to see that this is something that is very easy. It doesn't take a lot of time and it's something that anybody can do. So because of that, I am going to just keep on doing this on camera. And I apologize if that's loud. I, I really don't know how it sounds on the video. Um, so I do apologize if it is too loud. And when I picked out the papers, I just picked out a bunch of the um, coordinating blue colors. Um, because like I said, all of the other ones are definitely, they're pinks and roses. And then um, I think five of them are William Morris prints, which are, oh God, I love the William Morris prints. But I love the roses and the pinks and I am just I told my mom and dad they missed their chance to name me Rose because I love roses and we are almost done with this part And I used to score on the white side um, because I was afraid of messing up the um, pattern papers. But again, I told you, you know, I have a difficult time seeing sometimes and scoring it on the white, I really, I had a hard time seeing it then. So now, I, and I, it doesn't hurt the um, paper for, to score on the or even my printed papers, um, I do my, a bunch of digitals, and so I print them out, and it doesn't even hurt those, so. Um, again, this is just one of the little tricks I had to learn to be able to see to do what I want to do. And as you can see, it really, um, this part is not hard at all. It does make it much easier um, because, and I like making my own envelopes for it because when we go to stitch it in, we need the envelopes to be open. Um, so I'm just going to throw that trash in my little trash bucket. And I hope I am still in frame. This is, oh, let me put this back in my envelope, my punch board, because if I don't, I will lose it. Okay, so now that we have um, our envelopes at this point, now I'm just kind of going to go through and I'm going to fold them up the way that they will be folded and I'm going to go ahead and score them. Actually, I'll wait to score them so that I can just and I can score it all at one time. See? told you I'm all about like efficiency it has to make sense so this makes sense to me to get it folded and then score it all at one time so that's all I'm doing right now just folding them up
and probably do one that's like similar to this, but maybe an all pink. I don't know, I kind of already done a few of them like that, I guess. <laughs> and these would make great gifts for um, weddings, baby showers, um, birthdays, um, anything like that. Um, and the reason I started doing the pocket um, journal is because I know a lot of times people, when they see the book, they really want to look through them because they, they are fabulous. And so if you actually journal in them and then people want to start looking through your book, I, mean, I really don't want people to see what I journal about. So this way you can journal on cards and stick them in the envelopes and then they're out of the way to where people um, won't just see them. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to cut, um, try to cut evenly. Um, I'm just going to cut that off because I want that, I don't want that triangle sticking up. So I'm going to try and cut it as straight as I can, which is normally not that straight. Oh, this one, maybe I can get this one straight, huh? Now watch, this will be the most crooked one. No, I actually done good. I even surprise myself sometimes. Wow. I'm on a roll. No. Watch me cut this one crazy then. Not too bad. Okay. So now that I've got my envelopes done, for the most part, um, through, I'm going to throw this away because I'm not going to use those little scraps. And if you don't use a garbage bucket when you're crafting, you should, because let me tell you, that helps. All right, so now I need to get my book back out, or what's going to be my book. And I need to go ahead and fold this up. And I need to get it the way I want it. Now, I had made um, this template to be able to just stick in there and punch. Um, and I may still do that, but I, today I found that what I like to do um, pen is I basically just really like to line it up and I'll just kind of circle in where I want it, where I want to punch because I did make this out of the, um, what is it, those um, cutting boards that you get from Dollar Tree, the little flexible cutting boards, and but I have a hard time seeing them, and so I'm using this, I just kind of moved it down because I want to make sure that my holes are going to be exactly um, oops, I did not do that. And again, I'm just doing that. And I'm just going to mark them. Or color all over the cutting board, either one. Whatever works best for you. And then I'm just going to look, and I do like the placement. It looks like they're pretty even. And now I am going to find my big bite somewhere. And I hear Life Flight. We live right next or right behind the hospital. So I hear Life Flight quite often. Okay, so now I'm just taking the, um, I don't know if you can see, but I'm just taking my big bite and I am just lining it up and I'm just going to cut right where I colored those black circles up. And that has, that really makes it much easier for me because I can see where the black circles need to be. Um, I know exactly where I need to punch and it helps me kind of keep it halfway in line. Yeah, that's looking good. I don't know if you can see it. So just need to do the others. 
And this big bite, oh God, it helps so much. Because I had a hard time um, getting into the middle of the books. Um, whenever I was, and you can see how nice and lined up they are. But I had a really difficult time getting into the middle of the books um, with my regular chomper thing. I don't even know what they're called. And so when I got this, it, it just opened up a whole new world because I can get into the middle of the books. Um, I don't have to fold stuff up to try and get it in there. Yeah, so you can see that's pretty good lined up. Again, take my trash here, and I'm going to throw that away. Now, let me get out my needle and beeswax. And hopefully, there it is. All right. I'm just going to get my needle out here. And I just kind of keep this little, I keep it all together because it just makes it easier for me um, whenever I am doing something to just have everything right where I can get to it. Now the rule of thumb, um, because I am going to do, um, I think it's called the saddle stitch. I'm not positive, but it's the three, um, it, you only need the three. So the rule of thumb is you want this, the string, you want it to be three times the area that you're sewing. Now, that's going to be way more than enough string, but it's always better to have too much than not enough. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm just going to clip those and I clip it to where when I clip them, I clip those ends. Then I pull like this and I clip again and it clips those ends. So now I have five separate strings. I'm going to set this out of the way. And I'm going to get these pieces up real quick and put them in my little garbage bowl. I don't need my big bat. I'm not going to use that on the envelopes. I'll show you what I do. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I can do each of these individually, you know, like every time I go to use one. But again, I told you I like to do things in assembly line fashion. So I am going to go ahead and run all five of my strings through the beeswax. And I really like to get a good coating on it because it helps um, hold it everything in place. It keeps it from slipping. Um, and you can buy a string that's already waxed. Um, and I do have some that's already waxed, but even at that, I still like to add some more to it. Um, beeswax is very inexpensive. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Um, most craft stores have it. So, you know, for the price, and then it really doesn't take long. I just like that extra security of knowing that I've got it on there good. Maybe it's because I really just don't trust that somebody else done it good enough. That's probably the truth of the matter. I'm really bad about that. I am one of those I'd rather do something myself and know that I've done it correctly than for somebody else to do it. Um, like I said, I'm I'm out of work the rest of the week because the wedding and I get orders and summons that come in from the court and I told my supervisor I was like do not let anybody do my work I said I will handle all of my emails and if there's anything that comes in by mail an order or summons I'll come in and do it I don't care um, I don't want nobody touching it. nope okay so I've got that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is on this book, it doesn't matter what's the top and the bottom because it all looks the same. So it's not a big deal. Now I'm going to take my envelope and because this is how the envelopes are going to um, be in there. I'll show you. They're going to be like this. 
And so the only thing I really need to do right now is figure out um, what order I want them in. And actually that order looks just fine to me. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now I'm gonna take this here. And I again, I had a template um, or template for this, um, but it really, I'm not liking that. That's looking like it's tearing. We might need to fix that. Um, let me pause and grab some washi tape because I wanna fix this. Um, before we go any further, um, it may be where I scored it a little too hard. And I don't want anything happening. I don't want this coming undone. Um, which one is this? this one. Let me show you what we can do. I'm going to cut this. And I think I'm just going to eyeball this right here. And I'm just going to cut it a little bit, maybe a little shorter than what the envelope is. And then I'm going to cut this in half. I have had this happen on um, one other um, envelope where it done like this, and it was um, a thinner cardstock, and um, it just didn't like to be scored. And even though this is really not going to show, just in case, I want to go ahead and round that corner so it looks like it's a little more finished. Just in case it shows, like, noticeably, which it will not. Okay, so right here is where it was at. So I am just going to take and I am going to basically put a band-aid on it. We are going to create an area that will hold it and reinforce it. So, you know, in doing stuff like this, you're going to have issues like this. It, it's just one of those things you can't help. Um, there's not much you can do to keep from having some sort of issue, some sort of problem. Um, so the biggest thing is just knowing how to handle it when it does happen. And you can repair just about anything without any worries. Um, you know, and I, I would I'd always try to use the same paper. Um, but if I don't, I want to use a contract. I want it to be where it looks like I done it on purpose. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that it wasn't something that I had to do because something tore up. So that's what I try to do. And now since this one is ripped or was trying to rip, I may put this on the inside as well. Just to make sure that I've got it nice and taken care of. And again, I just want to make sure that I've got everything in there the way I want it. And then I'm going to glue the one side here. And I hope I'm staying on the screen. It's hard for me to see because I'm, number one, I'm short. And the way my phone is mounted for recording, I can either see the phone or I can craft because I absolutely cannot do both. Because if I get up to where I can see the phone, then my arms will not reach the crafts. Yep, that's truth. That is the truth. Just getting my glue spreader. And again, I'm just spreading it real good. And now I'm just going to, you see there's that little um, bit right there. I just want to cut that. Do the same thing here. Okay. And because this glue may still be wet, I really do need to go ahead and do this one. 
so let me look at the arrangement of the papers to see if I'm okay with arranging them a different way because I want to do this one last and give that glue time to dry. So this is what I'm going to do. Fine, problem solved. As long as this one's not trying to tear. <laughs> and it looks okay. It looks like I wasn't as forceful on the scoring. So I fold it like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I take the envelope and I line it up to where I want it sitting as far as um, top to bottom in the journal. And so once I do that, I see where my holes are and I just kind of mark right there where the, um, the holes should be. And again, like I said, I had a template that I used and I found this was just easier for me. So then I take my all that came with my book binding kit, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'll just kind of fold that, um, fold that over so that I can make sure that I get in that crease. And then I just punch through it. Now, be careful. These awls are extremely sharp. That is speaking from experience. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's done. Now I just need to take my needle and thread it with one of my waxed strings here. Okay, so how you do this is you're going to go in the middle hole, just like that, in the middle hole here, pull through. Now you want to leave you a little tail because that's what we're going to use to tie it with. I'm going to go back in through the top hole and then the top hole here. Pull it through. I'm going to go on the right side. If I'm looking at it, I'm going to go on the right side. And it doesn't matter what side you go on. Just you have to make sure that when you come back through that you're on the opposite side. So I went through the bottom hole. And now I'm going to go right back through that middle hole. Now, when I go through the middle hole and I come up, there are a couple things you need to be aware of. Number one, you want to make sure that you come on the other side of the string um, from where this one is. And you want to make sure that you have not went through this string um, because it will make it difficult to tie and hold. Um, so those are the main two things. And you see, that's how simple it is. To, and that's with any kind of journal that you're doing, you can do that, whether it be um, a junk journal, um, a regular journal. Um, that is a very easy stitch to do. And I'm just pulling it tight. And then I'm going to tie a knot in it. And then I'm going to tie it one more time and pull it good and tight. Now, because I do have the wax on it, I don't have to worry about it slipping so much. So I'm gonna kinda cut it a little bit close. Now, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can either kinda just fold it up and go on to the next one, but I'm thinking to keep it out of the way, it may be better to go ahead and glue this envelope shut. And so I'm just putting the glue right there on that edge I fold my sides in and then I just kind of bring it together and put it up like that. Now the other thing you need to be aware of is um, the glue may seep out into the inside of your envelope um, and if it does then your envelope will be sealed and it kind of defeats the purpose. So I am, I, you can put something behind it or whatever, I'm just going to run something through it and everything looks great. So this is looking good. So I'm going to see if I have a paper clip right handy. And I do. I prefer the longer paper clip for this, but it's okay. I will use what I have. And I'm just gonna paper clip it shut just so that um, it's not flopping everywhere. So we have our first envelope in. Now, I'm just going to go to the second envelope, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
I'm going to open it. I am going to get it even with this envelope as far as um, the distance from the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to mark where my hole should be. So once I've got it where I think it should be, then I just mark where I think or where the holes need to be. And it's really, it's that simple to do these. Um, I am not sure how we are on time as to where we're at, but we are very close to being done with this. Um, let me see where are we at. Okay, we're at 40 minutes. And that was with my boo-boo. So you can see that you can easily do one in an hour. Now, you know, the embellishments and all that's gonna take a little bit longer, but as far as getting the journal done, one hour and you're good. So again, just going through the middle hole, middle hole, going through, holding on to some of my tail there. Top hole, top hole. Right side of my um, string, bottom hole, bottom hole pull through and then I'm going to go back through the middle hole and again I want to get on the opposite side of that first tail and pull through and then I'm just tightening it real good and I'm just going to tie that double knot in it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere And then I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this one as well. So you can see that this is something that is, it's not hard to do. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time. And here's the other good thing you can really use up your 12 by 12 paper um, pads. You know, you get the ones that you just really don't know what to do with it. And um, so this, you see, this was all 12 by 12 paper pads. Um, the embellishments that I'm going to put in here, I'm going to use um, the cuts off of these um, envelopes. Um, so you can see that it's something, it's, not only is it easy, but it is busting, you know, all of that stash that you have, like me. And I'm going to be honest, I looked on um, Hobby Lobby's little website before I come home, and it said, um, all items labeled Paper Studio are 50% off. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta have some of the more paper pads. Well, if you could see my little area over here, you would realize very quickly, I don't need paper pads probably for the next 10 years. I wanted them, but I didn't go get them, but I probably will tomorrow. I'll figure out a reason why I have to have them tomorrow. All right, so again, I'm just gonna go through this middle hole, middle hole, pull through. Hold on to the tail, top hole, top hole, I hope I'm in, in screen here, then I'm going to go through the bottom hole, and bottom hole, going to hold on to that tail, pull through, and then I'm going to go back through the middle hole. And when I go in, I just want to make sure, that one's trying to get in the way, that I want to make sure I come on the opposite side of that long one. And look, see that? It looks like I went through it, which thankfully I didn't pull it too tight. And so this would not, because I did go through it, it would not tighten up good enough if I tried. So the way that I've done it, I think I'm going to be able to just pull that string through 
um, without having to completely redo it. Yep. And again, like I said, um, you know, things are going to happen in your journals whenever you're making them. That's not always um, the way you want it. So, and that's why I'm not going to edit any of this because I want you to see that these things do happen. Um, and when they do, there are ways to handle them. Um, I know when I started, I just thought that everything was going to go perfectly. And mm -mm. first time I glued an envelope shut, I near about cried. And I glued it shut. I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously, I wasn't thinking. But I done it. Maybe more than once. <laughs> Probably more than five or six times I've done that. <clears throat> and, being truthful, I will probably do it again. Because that's just how I roll. That is how I roll. I am good about making messes like that. <laughs> that's why I learned this little trick here, because I cannot tell you how many times I have went through all of this trouble to get to this point and then some of my glue seep out and I not notice it and I end up with an envelope that is useless to me yeah okay so now we're moving on to the fourth envelope you see how quickly this goes um, it really does go quick and especially the more you make them the quicker you get and like I said I it's almost muscle memory with me now um, I find these to be very relaxing to do because you know I'm comfortable doing them number one um, but number two is they really don't take a lot of stress and a lot of fault um, other than you know trying to figure out what order I want to put the paper in now that can be stressful now let me tell you that really can be for me I can stress myself out in a heartbeat trying to figure out what order I want the envelopes to go in I'm not, really they're all going in the same journal I mean, you know, why does it make that big a difference which one goes in the front and which one goes in the back? And But I want it to be, like if you notice, I have a blue, a white, a blue, a white, a blue. Yeah. Yep. So, again, I just want to make sure I go through the, to the opposite side of the, um, the string that's there. I want to get this pulled tight and I'm turning it over making sure I got it pulled tight. And then I'm just going to tie it real good. Okay. And I'm just going to trim this off. And then I'm going to glue. And so once you get to making these and you get, you will come up with your own system of how to do them. You may prefer to go through and um, cut each envelope separately and stitch it in and go back and cut another one. And then stay, you know, you never know. It's, it's really what works best for the individual person that's doing it. Um, for me, this was just what worked best for me. Um, but it does not mean that this is what's going to work best for everybody. Um, so I just had to learn to do what worked best for me. Okay. Now, if you remember, this is the envelope that I done this on. So this one may be a little harder to do, but that's okay. And it is. But we will win. I'm just going to fold that over and I want to line up 
where I want this to be. And this is not looking right for some reason. Let me make sure that it's going to... I just want to make sure that everything lines up good on it. I don't know. Mm -mm. We might need to redo. We might need to redo this envelope because this is looking a little, a little too long for me. And I think I have another piece of that paper. I mean, I have plenty of other papers, but I really want to use that one because that's the one I have picked out. Let me see what I can find here very quickly. This, again, like I said, it's just a, um, a paper pad. I think this is one that I got from um, Michael's. It was the Hot Buy. I think it was Buy One, Get Two Free. Um, who can resist those? You know, it doesn't matter if you need it or not. Buy One, Get Two Free. Yeah. And they had that on sale the other day, but when I went in there to actually get some that I did not need, um, they, they didn't have, like, the whole store was almost empty. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, our Michaels has done clearance on everything just about, and there is not hardly anything at all at our local Michaels store. And I don't know if I need to panic or I'm just hoping that they're just getting everything ready to get maybe new stuff in, but like, there's nothing. <laughs> so my first thought is panic, <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know. But I forgot to get that. So let me hopefully I'll get this back in. lined up properly to score it. And so again, you see, like I said, you'll come across things where um, you do it and it just doesn't look right, doesn't work out right. And this is, I guess that's okay. <laughs> I don't know, that line just for whatever reason did not look straight to me. So maybe I'm the one that's looking crooked right now. And so rather than try to put something in there that I was not happy about how it was looking. And I really hope I'm doing this one right because it is not looking right to me. I don't know. We maybe messed this one up big time. After I just got through saying, oh yeah, I've done it so many times that... No, look at that. Can you see this, guys? What am I doing? We're not going to do that. Mm -mm. We're going to get another sheet of paper. And we're going to act like I know what I'm doing. And obviously I don't. Or so it would seem. Oh my goodness. Yeah, apparently this is. Um, I was like, oh, I can get on there and do this video for them because this is so easy for me. Um, this won't take me but a few minutes. And shoot. <laughs> Who was I kidding? Oh my gosh. I don't know what I was thinking. But, like I said, rather than try to work with something that I'm not happy or satisfied with, even though it's aggravating, I would rather redo it and just make sure that it's done correctly. Because um, I really don't, I don't, I want it to be not, you know, especially if I, it's something I'm going to be putting in Etsy to sell. I don't want to sell something that I am not proud of. And if I settle for something in the journal, then it's something I'm not proud of. So I refuse to do that, even if it takes me more time. Um, that's just how I am. I want it to be correct. Let's 
hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I've got this one correct. I don't know what I done on the other one. I don't know if it was from me putting the other paper in from where I had um, had to put like the Band-Aid on it or something. I don't know if that's what caused it um, to look like it was bigger than what it should be. But all I know is I wasn't comfortable using it. Okay, so that looks better. So let me get my book back. Let me get this out. Okay, let me see. Before I do that, let me just look at it. Yeah, see, that looks better. And I, I, I think I had lined them all up before I had to add that paper and I, they fit. So I know that's what it had. Somehow in adding that paper um, the way I did, it just made it bulk up or um, get bigger. So again, I'm just gonna line the paper, the envelope up as to where I want it to sit. I'm going to mark it. And I'm going to punch my holes. Now, you really are not supposed to do this while you're holding it, but um, I'm stubborn and hard-headed, and so I do it. Um, I have jabbed my finger more times than I want to admit. And then I sit in the floor and cry like a baby. That's the truth. <laughs> I really do, because I'm a wimp. Like, any kind of pain, uh-uh. Nope. Now, I had nine children. The first five, I had absolutely, completely natural, no painkiller whatsoever. Was not in pain. Um, my last four, which were all boys, I did have epidurals with them, um, two of which was medically necessary, and the other two, you know, I'd already had epidurals, so I chose them. Um, but that was nothing. Childbirth, nothing. Yep, not at all. Poke my finger. Oh my God. You will see and hear me cry like a baby. I cannot handle it. I'm a wimp and I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> and I'm just putting that back in there right now so I don't lose it. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this one tight. And I'm just going to trim this up. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it. And especially if I had cut the second envelope correctly, it, this, you know, that would not have taken much time at all to fix, but since I decided to, I don't know, Willy Wonka it or something, um, <laughs> it took more time than it should have, I can say that. And again, just making sure I'm not gluing it down, because with the top record I have right this second, it would not surprise me. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over here to this first envelope. And I am going to take a contrasting piece of um, paper. And I am just going to cut a small strip. Now you can do this however you want. It doesn't have to be this strip like this. Um, you can even put brad or something. But this is just what I have found um, for me that works the best, is quickest, easiest. And it works. So um, then I'm just gonna, and I kind of cornered, put, um, notch the corners a little bit, and I'm just putting a little bit of glue like that. Then I'm going to take, and I'm just gonna apply this right here. And because what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow that envelope flap to tuck into it, and so it'll keep it the envelope flap from getting bent. 
And again, I'm just doing the same thing here. I'm going to choose, um, you know, an opposite contrasting color or contrasting pattern. And um, that's one reason why I said keep that stuff. And again, I'm just like mitering the edges, I guess is what you call it. Um, you could cut out, you know, something, some neat little extravagant thing if you wanted to, or, you know, whatever you want to do. It's just so long as you have something there to hold that closed. Um, because it will, um, and, <laughs> This looks weird. I was looking at it and I'm like, what on earth did I do wrong here? But it's because of the way this pattern is. It looks so odd. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, you just, you want to make sure that you have something there to hold it down. So that um, it will turn the corner um, edges, the ends of those envelopes up. Um, they get bent real easy because of the length that they are. Now, if you don't like that length, you can always cut the um, envelope flap down some. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I actually like them that length, um, especially if I am going to be putting stuff in there that I'm actually journaling on. I prefer that they be um, long like this. And so I make sure that I've got it in the right place and then I pull it up. Um, just so that it'll give it time to dry. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And what do I want to put here? Let's put this one. All right. We are almost done, guys. Because I am not going to decorate um, this on video because this video is already very long. I did not intend for it to be this long because it does not normally take me this long to make one of these. But when you're having little issues like I was having, or big issues like I was having, it takes that long. <laughs> yeah. So now I just need to find another piece that I want to use to put on that one. I think I'm going to use this here. Did you see how, how long it was taking me to make that decision? See? Oh my goodness. I'm, what is wrong with me? And I just want to get this on so I can show you what the actual finished journal looks like. Because, I mean, it's finished. It really is. Um, this is it. You could, just like this, you're good to go. Um, but I do want to do a few more things to it. So now that this one's dry, I'm just going to tuck it in and see how it keeps my envelope flaps um, tucked in nice and neat. And I'm going to wait on that one since I just put it down. But there we go, guys. That is it. Um, you can see how the signatures are sewn in. Um, now, one thing that I do on some of them, and I may do that on this one, is I will put a contrasting paper over it, and it'll cover that. Um, you know, but from here, it's just embellishing it. As far as the journal goes, it's done. Um, I will put some stuff on the corners to keep the corners from tucking. But that's it. So if you like the video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and um, hit that little notific, the little bit red bell beside the subscribe button so that you'll be notified whenever I do upload a video. Um, if you did like this or enjoyed watching me make my mistakes or, you know, whatever, um, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Don't give me a thumbs down, please. Even if you didn't like me, just scroll on by. Just don't give me a thumbs down. <laughs> um, but I like thumbs up. Um, so... Thanks for watching, guys, and check back again, and um, we will see what we can do about embellishing this. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye.